head back here and we will park my car. And so we just got back from uh, doing that puzzle in Egypt. And now we are back at the, at the house. Why Jane in the house? Supposed to be safe. Oh boy, nothing here. Ah, gotta find more bullets. Only four. I'm keeping this, you know. to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that detective fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, not good. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. Just, Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God. As far as I can tell, what? the detective comedy seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. The two right. orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Deceto, and Conby wasn't sure who he could trust. All right, Dr. Gray's office. <clears throat> Ooh. Dr. Gray's office, uh-huh. So probably treatment room that way so you gotta go straight ahead yeah because that is closed straight ahead left what hmm. not sure now Dining room. <coughs> what is going on here, look? Some evil. Christ, what the hell was that? So how, how am I supposed to get there? I don't don't remember. Shall I go downstairs or go upstairs? Or this way? It's blocked. It's blocked. Emily will have to die. You can't let a woman off plane. I don't want to run into the orderlies right now. I'm not sure I can trust them.
<laughs> I think Dr. Gray might be in there. Perfect time. My goodness, another key. Okay, so that's close, that's close. Let's snoop around his office then. <clears throat> Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony, a monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all 12 members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Ponchartrin. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. Even the name Derseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. In the case of naming the plantation, Derseto was certainly not an accident. We know that Elijah Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult, for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Dorsetto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. As much as Dorsetto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Shub Nigrath is on the other hand very uncommon. Almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Udnausprechlichen Kultin and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Darseto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Darseto as malnourished and maniacal. As much as the army tried to save them, they fought back with fervor as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte Artis colony remains a mystery, 
The recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. Mmm, interesting. Well. Dark girls found in the grave of Zeus Greek snake, found buried in the sacred temple, along with the dark man's contract. Why is it examined? Okay, I did so. Find an alternative way to the stair hole. Where am I now? Now we just gotta explore. I can now library. Wasn't creepy at all. One of the young, whatever that means. Mm 
must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. Uh huh. Open up the safe inside the flooded office. I don't have the combination for this. But maybe Jeremy did. Jeremy? Do you have a clue? Jeremy's thoughts. I won't find them. I just use YouTube. I need the key. Jeremy's room again. Uh, open up the safe inside the clerk's office. Okay, I need to open up the safe. Ah. So there must be some clue. Date of admission. Nine one three. Nine one three. All right, time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm gonna have to put my talisman to use. Office key. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. 
I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new worldview in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. All right. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. <laughs> all to myself, eh, yeah. Let's uh, open up this door. Let's some fresh air in. Cassandra's thing. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Franz key, I, ah, oh, yeah, that's Franz, that's for the globe up there. She like a country Franz. McCaffrey's pirate treasure. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. Where is that supposed to be? Okay, that's gotta be in Cassandra's uh, room. And the globe is uh, in front of the room. Oh, not the key. Stairwell key. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess that's the one. Go downstairs. Jeremy's treatment. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, yeah. I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this Chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. 
Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. Okay. Dr. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Conway decided. He had to be. Either Dr. Gray was using the idea of the dark man to manipulate and torture Jeremy, or the dark man was an actual powerful being possessing Jeremy. And in that case, Dr. Gray was simply a stew. Maybe both could be true at once. Combi felt his mind racing in all directions. No matter what, he had to find a way to break the pact. That was what Jeremy said was needed. It didn't even matter what was true or not. If Jeremy wouldn't leave Deceto before the contract was broken, then Combi had to make it happen. He just wished the steps on the contract made a little more sense. All right, where are we? Stairwell, uh, Cassandra Gray's office, clerk's office. Well, there's some kind of puzzle. Where? Where's the puzzle? Or is that the safe? Probably. So maybe a glitch. That is still closed. Up we go. Uh, which we know. Yeah. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids. Ain't great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. Uh -huh. The usual. Then why all the excitement? That is just something about tonight. Something is different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. <laughs> God damn it, Grace, stay put for once.
All right, France. There's something missing. Yeah, France. Ooh. Map of the Caribbean, huh? Thank you very much. First floor hall key. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. Okay, I mean, it's the toilet, yeah? Let me just go, maybe. Something up here or there. I don't know. Mac Shut up. Uh, Grace's room, Cassandra's room. McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Conby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. While Conby enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Grace. It was taunting him, like he was supposed to remember, but couldn't. Uh, investigate Cassandra's room. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Room number three. Inside the empty room. Where's the empty room? Am I missing? I had the drawing.
Okay, I guess I need to find a, some kind of picture. Find a greatest missing drawing. Uh, greatest drawing. Take a look at the empty room. Okay, I'm gonna go to the stairwell. But let me have a look at the Jeremy. Jeremy's room and there's another room. Uh huh. Detective Combi, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. Please, with all my blessings, take her away from this cursed place. I have destroyed that eater of worlds and locked it away in the attic and retreated to a place of hiding. Tell Emily I'm safe. Tell her all the lies you can think of to make her listen. Take her back to New Orleans. Sincerely, Jeremy. Brother, I need you to trust me. This is the most important moment in our family's history. I know you have doubts and that the terrible Mama Loa told you lies. I would never betray you. I promise. Lottie. Stairwell, attic. Need to go down. Don't need to go here, do we? That's barge. And down. to go to here, yeah? I'm trying to figure out the... Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Sometimes... I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. 
There's something about Tercedo. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. Sounds about right. Well, there were things here. Take this much more. This has to end. Money. Need the key. Radiography. Patient Jeremy Hartwood. Date June 14, 1930. Plates. Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations. Even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain. Possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. 
While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Yeah, very typical for that uh, day and age. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance, as well as in efficiency. An ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would Jesus untether Christ. the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. The Circuit box. Surgery room key. Radiograph. Love you all, leave a like, comment, I almost say, said complain, but you can do that too, and subscribe. Bye bye.